Micro interactions not only make your website look and feel more polished and professional, but they can also play a huge role in showcasing critical information to your users. In this video, we're first gonna take a look at a real life scenario where awards recently announced their annual awards, and we're gonna take a look at the micro interaction that they use every single year to showcase their annual winners. And then we're gonna take a look at a Webflow clonable that you guys can use right now and integrate the same interaction into your own projects, portfolio, anything like that. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this is the awards, annual awards site that they just released. And every year they have the same exact animation interaction here. And I know that every year they have the same one because there is an clonable by Dhruv Shadiv, and I'll leave a link to the description so you guys can check this out and clone it for yourselves. But every year they go ahead and create the same exact one. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go into open and Webflow and we're going to see exactly how something like this is created. Now, we're going to break this down into a few different steps for this this entire interaction, right? So the first thing that we need to take a look at here is obviously going to be the marquee that moves from the left or the right to the left, and it's a constant, constant, constant loop. Then we have the image, or in this case, it's a video that slightly rotates as you scroll left and right on the X axis. And we're gonna take a look at how you can actually do that with X and Y mouse interactions. Then there is the blend mode that's happening here with the text and the actual content in the background. And so we're gonna dive into all of that, so stay tuned. So here we have the menu item, which is the actual interaction. Within that, we have the menu item media, the title wrapper, the marquee, which loops and loops and loops. So it's three different parts that we can take a look at. And we also have the cursor wrapper, which helps us with this circle interaction here. If you guys can see that the entire mouse is now a circle, but we, we can kind of skip that for now. It's not, it's not too important. The important thing is gonna be this interaction. So we've got this media here. We've got this menu item media. And if we open it, we got the media wrapper. If we open that, we have a full video. So that full video is the media in the background that we see here. That's also available on the annual site. So we can go ahead and see that once we click on the menu item or once we hover over it, there's a few different things that are happening. So we have two individual element triggers. We have the, the mouse hover and then the mouse over the individual element. So let's go over the mouse hover first. So we've got the menu item media here and it starts off at 0% opacity and that is the initial state. And then once we start hovering over it, we have the title wrapper, which is also 0%. We then have the marquee wrapper, which goes to 100%. So that starts looping and we start playing that. But it's interesting to know that that's always happening in the back end or in the background. We just don't necessarily see it until we move the opacity in. We have the menu item, which is at 25%. And then the video itself or the picture or whatever you want to add to it is going to be at 80%. So that 80% is going to be important when we check out the blend modes themselves. We then have the same thing with the menu hover out. And that's going to do a similar picture. We're just going to reverse those, those metrics. So the marquee wrapper is going to go back to zero. So we're not going to see it anymore. We're going to see the title wrapper go up to 100%. So we now see the text itself instead of the, the wrapping that's going on or the, the symbol that's moving left to right or right to left. We have the menu item that goes to 100 and then the opacity for menu item media. And so the video, the picture, whatever you want to add to it, goes back down to 0%. So we're seeing two things happening here. We have the marquee that's moving constantly and we only showcase that when we hover on top of it. And then we have the media as well that is always there and it, we're showcasing it only when we hover on top of the parent element that we want it to be over. Now on top of that, we have the mouse over the element and that is super, super cool because that gives us that cool interaction that we see here with a mouse hovering over the piece of text or the, the symbol where we get the, the div to move left and right. And in this case, for the annual awards site, they don't have it, but for our actual example here, we do have it. So I do think that this example that they used last year or the clonable by our Druv here works a little bit better in my opinion. So the way that we can get that to rotate and to move left and right is very simply with mouse X actions. And we can see that here. So I'm just gonna open the navigator again. And we can see that the menu item medium so the parent element that holds our image or our video or YouTube video or whatever it is that you want to showcase is now going to be moving alongside the mouse. But that only happens when we hover over something. So the menu item media starts over at negative 50 VW, so all the way left VW, and then 
also negative three degrees. So that starts all the way on this side. And then as we scroll to the right side of the page, it's gonna do the exact opposite. So we have the move here that moves all the way 30 VW. So if we can preview that, we can see that as we hover over the left side here, we start closer to 0%. And on the right side, we go closer to 100%. So that only happens once we hover over it. So if we're not exactly on top of it, it's not going to be doing anything. Uh, next, we have the menu item rotate. So it goes from negative 3 degrees to positive 3 degrees. And that's just going to slightly rotate it as we see here with the this longer one here. We can see that it slightly rotates it from this negative three all this way to the positive three. So that's a nice little touch there, but it's not necessarily critical as we see with this annual awards here. So let's go ahead and click done. So if we take a look at everything that we've seen here, we've got a couple things that are constant throughout this. We always have the symbol that is looping from right to left, and that is done with a very little bit of custom code. I'm gonna edit the component, go into our marquee CSS, and I'm just going to open the code editor. And this is something that you guys can copy and paste directly into your own project. Just make sure that the class is the one that you want to attack or target. So marquee.track is the one that we want to showcase here. And that is simply the content itself that we want to keep looping. Now, this could be a, a portfolio name, a company name, the foundry that we're looking at here, whatever it is, just make sure that that is always going to be looping with the copy or text or images or whatever it is that you want to be using at all times. So we have this marquee text that's always looping, always going on. We have the title wrapper, which is simply the name of the foundry in this case. And then we have the menu item media. So within those three, once we hover over it, we get the menu item media to start playing. We get the marquee to start moving and we get the title wrapper to go back to zero. And those three things switch back and forth depending on our hover state. At zero, when we're not hovering over it, we have Pangram, Pangram Foundry, so the title itself. And then once we hover over it, it seems very complex. It seems like when you look at the annual awards, like how do they do this? But it's very simple. We get the marquee that starts playing or we see it to start playing because it's always playing thanks to that custom code. And then we also have the video or an image or whatever we want it to do that also starts to showcase. And to take a last look at the video here or the, the blend mode that we have going on here. So to find it, we just need to go directly into the marquee here, edit the component again. And once we go into the track itself and go into the child elements, so this is the horizontal track, the actual, the actual content for it, we see that the blending mode is on color dodge. So that's what's gonna allow these cool blending modes to happen is directly in the parent element of the symbol here. And so anytime that the symbol is happening, we can see that the, the blending mode is going to be on top of the video or the image or whatever media you want to be adding. So now that we see how we can create that with those three simple steps, it's interesting to think about what applications this could be used for. So in my case, if I was going to use this for myself, for my own portfolio, it would be interesting to take a look at it in terms of the companies that I've worked with, for example. And so imagine here we have Adobe, then Apple, then not companies I work with, but just for example, we got all these cool companies and on top of every time that we scroll over the name of the company, maybe we get the project they've created, maybe the person I've worked with, maybe a little detail of the project. So something to showcase a little preview before you click onto that item. And imagine if this was a CMS item, it would be a very interactive way of getting your users to click on the portfolio piece that you wanted to showcase. If you guys enjoyed that video and that demonstration, I recommend that you guys take a deeper dive into the Webflow Masterclass. The link is gonna be in the description, so do take a look at that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.